lettering your comic page with Comic Life 3. Okay, so first I start up, I've got a template chooser, so I just pick, I have a template already selected with an 8.5 by 11 size paper. So the first thing I do is I shut down the um, <clears throat> hide layouts and photos because I don't really use that. Okay, now I zoom out to uh, get more space for the sheet so I can see where everything's going to go. Then I go to insert, I go to choose, and then I have pre-selected folders. I have my scans in that folder. So they're TIFFs, so I'll select the page four, that's the one I'm working on. Then I stretch it out to make sure that it'll fit exactly, you know, with the right proportions and everything on the page. Okay, so now that I've got that done, what I'm going to start doing is putting the balloons in there. So you go down to the bottom and you just click and drag. So I know I'm going to have a balloon on that particular panel. I'm going to have a balloon on that panel and so forth. Now I've already drawn the story. So, you know, I kind of, I, I leave space for dialogue, you know, as you should, because you don't want to have trouble trying to figure out where your stuff is going to go. And, um, so I kind of make all those decisions when I'm drawing the page. Okay, so now I kind of get closer so I can see what's going on. First thing I do is I select all the balloons and I select 1.5 point for the balloon border. And that just, it looks nicer. So I do that to all of them. All right, so now we're ready to start dialoguing. So I'm gonna go into that first balloon. I'm gonna select the words. And um, then, you know, this program, Comic Life 3, gives you a lot of fonts you can choose from. Uh, so there I am writing my dialogue in. Now, this story is about, a, it's like a science fiction, like a Flash Gordon slash Buck Rogers type hero. And so they're being attacked by a ship, like an organic ship. And so they're trying to to get out of that situation. And so here's where I go and I pick the, the font, um, nine point. And then, you know, I kind of try to shape the words around the, the balloon so that it sits well in there and I can adjust the size of the balloon accordingly. So here you can see where I'm kind of fitting that format. And here I, I went and put, I picked another balloon because I wanted to have some more dialogue. And so he's saying, we're moving towards it. I can't break free. So now I'm just going to move the tail up. It's just all click and drag. Okay, I'm resizing that balloon to kind of put it in that space. And then, you know, of course, I'm going to bold certain words for emphasis. We're moving towards it. And then I can't break free. So kind of resizing that. Now, whenever you attach a balloon like that, it, it most of the time it does pick the, the same 1.5 point on the balloon, which is great. And um, yeah, this one, this particular balloon, I broke into the second panel, but that's okay because it kind of goes right into the dialogue for the hero. Okay, so I'm putting the dialogue in and now I'm going to select the dialogue, change the font to digital strip, nine point. Okay, move the tail. You can stretch it. It's really cool. This program is amazing. So I've already got it kind of in a format that I want. So now I can just probably just resize the balloon. I might... I think I'm adding some emphasis there for, yeah, making those words bold. If we can't break free. Okay. So just writing the dialogue in there. I think I decided I wanted to put another dialogue balloon there, so I brought that in. I think he's going to say launch the torpedoes, launch a torpedo. So what they're going to do is they're going to launch a torpedo and then just, if they can't break free from the tractor beam that's holding them in there, that's going to swallow the ship, he's going to launch a torpedo and then hopefully blow all the way through and just go through the, the ship. So yeah, I guess resizing everything to nine. You can go smaller. You can go nine, eight. I, I did eight the other day. You don't want to go too small. Also, you can bring in your own fonts. If you have different fonts you want to use, you can. 
there's a way to do that in the program. Maybe I'll do another video showing how to do that. It's because it's a little tricky, but I've, I've got fonts that I've bought from Comic Craft and some other ones from Blambot that I really like. And uh, so you can certainly use any font you want. I mean, it comes with a lot of really cool fonts already. So if you don't have money for that, it's okay. I mean, you can just use the fonts that it has. All right, so there I am resizing the balloon. It's good to have a, a good space all the way around. Um, Got to fix the size on that one. So I guess I'm going to do the wording first on it. This is I'm recording this after I did the video. Yep, put some emphasis on that. Launch a torpedo. And then I'm going to change the size of the balloon to 1.5. So there we go. Okay, move that down a little bit. Good to go. Yep. So now I scroll down and um, I'm going to have the, uh, you know, they obviously make it through the ship. So it's going to say something like Yahoo or something like that. And so I just got to make the uh, f balloon bigger. And then I'm going to use a special f lettering font that they have down at the bottom, like an action type font. So, and then I'm bringing in another, another see how I attach the um, other balloon where he's saying we made it. I'm probably going to change that to make it a um, digital strip, eight point or nine point rather. And then I'm going to probably, uh, yep, see, I've verified the balloon was 1.5. And it usually matches whatever you attach it to, which sometimes includes the, the font as well. Uh, bold, yep. And then that's a little, I want to make it fit the balloon better. So kind of move the letters around, center them. Okay, now I'm bringing in the special effects lettering. So you select it. I accidentally selected it twice, so I can delete one. And then they're on the side there on the left. So you just putting in my Yahoo. And I'm just going to go down there and pick the one that I think fits. Now these are in color. My book's going to be black and white. But that's okay. I mean, I can still do it in color. And then, you know, when it prints up the final... Um, book it's going to be in black and white so I think there you go I found that one that I liked a little small on the balloon so I got to make the balloon a little bit bigger now when I was doing this I had the uh, part of the bottom of the page was obscured I needed to scroll down but I don't think I realized it for a few minutes here so I'm just making space I look at it I see all that space down at the bottom so I'm like you know what I can move the dialogue down to the bottom so there you go that's where I started moving it and then I realized you know what I could probably scroll a little bit more so I don't obscure any of the artwork yeah I see that's where I kind of realized it okay there you go just refitting it now that I've got the full panel showing Moving it out so I don't block any of the artwork. And there we go. Then I zoom out so that I can take a quick look and see if there's anything missing. I think that balloon, I think I realized it's a little big, so decided to resize it a little bit. I think I decided to change something in the dialogue here. I'm going to, I think we, then we will have to go right through it. I think I wanted to shorten that up. So then we go right through it. Then we go right through. There you go. Kind of a little, some quick editing. Sometimes editing always happens when I letter comics. Just something fits better once you see it on the page. And it's okay to make those decisions. I mean, as long as you're the writer, right? All right. So everything's looking good. Yep. Happy with this page. So I'm going to go to file, save it, save or save as. And I'm, I've already got a folder for lettered with Comic Life. I've got a folder for the scan, the original scans DPI, 600 DPI. Then I've got another one for the TIFFs. Because for some reason, 
the TIFFs uh, are the ones that open up. Then we got one for Lettered with Comic Life. I've got another one for the PDFs. So I'm going to pick one of the old titles. I'm going to rename this one number four because it's page four. Then I'm going to hit save. All right. Then I'm going to go back to file and I'm going to export it as a PDF because, you know, I do all my pages as PDFs. And then I just put them all together in one big document when I put my book together. And so this one, I'm going to save the PDF, which I've already got a folder for, and boom. Um, I had trouble moving over bitmaps. I don't know why it wasn't opening or recognizing. So when I turn them into TIFFs, that solved the problem. So that's what I recommend. And thanks for watching.